I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now, and this is our review of the ZTE Nubia 5. ZTE may not be well known in America as it is in Asia, but they're trying to make a big splash in the United States, and their Nubia 5 is their flagship. After a very positive experience unboxing this phone and actually using it for a full week, we feel that they're off to a decent start. The Nubia 5 is an elegant phone, with soft touch plastic on the back and metallic borders that actually do feel metal. It's very light and leads to a very pleasant feel in the hand. The only annoying part of the design is the placement of the speakers, which get muffled easily on a table, and the capacitive buttons that don't really tell you what they are. It's got a very nice 5-inch 1080p IPS display that does a decent job with color reproduction, even though a little undersaturated for my taste. The specs don't spell flagship for US standards, though. It lacks LTE, sports last year's Snapdragon S4 Pro processor, and runs last year's Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, aside from the fact that it's only got 16 gigs of non-expandable storage. The rest of the stuff is here, though. 2 gigs of RAM, NFC, so some parts are good. Its software is unique though. I'm not a fan of Android skins, but I'd call this one one of the better ones that I've used. It removes the app tray and loads everything onto endless home screens. It's like an iPhone, just better because you can mix them with widgets, with folders, and applications in the same UI, and saves you the extra step of having to go out of the home screen to get something. I also like that the UI elements are polished and minimalistic. Not too much bloat, not too little attention to detail. I guess the only complaint that I have with the UI is that it does bog down the phone at times. The phone is frequently having to redraw the home screen whenever you load it with a lot of tasks, which could be solved with a newer version of Android, but we don't know how ZTE performs in this department. Other than that, we have other features like, for example, motion features like we see on Samsung Galaxy phones, which are nice additions, and actually ZTE does a good job with these. All this said, using the Nubia 5 was mostly positive. It performs decently when it comes to day-to-day -day use, and even though we weren't able to test it with high-end games like Asphalt 8 because oddly they're not compatible with the phone, it can play games well and with no considerable lag. We've got some good audio quality for calls through the earpiece, and the speakerphone quality is actually good for music and for calls as long as you don't place the phone flat on the table. Now the biggest win with this phone is battery life. At only 2300 milliamp hours, I don't know how ZTE does it, but I've landed two solid days of use with this phone for the first time ever. It's a non-replaceable power pack, and I guess you won't really need that. It performs well no matter what you do with the phone. My only major disappointment with the experience was through the camera. ZTE boasts that this phone offers a great user experience through its Konica Minolta lens and its Sony CMOS processor, but it clearly needs a software tweak. Photos appear overexposed in pretty much every scenario and setting you use. The front-facing photos are just unusable, and the same can be said about photos taken with a flash, again due to excessive overexposure. Video is also good, but not great since the software lacks controls, it continuously refocuses, and it doesn't allow you to selectively focus. Even though you see the camera responding when you touch the display, it actually doesn't focus to what you're looking for, which is odd. Overall, the ZTE Nubia 5 is a good phone. It's a battery trooper, it offers a decent user experience, and it's actually a good phone for just about every average user. It's just hard to recommend this phone due to its price tag at $450. At times you can get a Moto X for the same unlocked price or a Nexus 5 for $100 less with LTE, plus the latest version of Android, or even a Moto G which is $250 less expensive. It offers a similar experience. It's really hard for this device to compete, even though we want it to. We do praise ZTE for a good start with this phone, and that's the reason why we give it a 7 out of 10. We can't wait to see the ZTE Nubia 6. That's it for our full review of the ZTE Nubia 5. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you leave us a comment down below and tell us your impressions of this phone. Do you agree with our score or not? You can also follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you on the next review.